Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for sh sharing your time to uh, join this meeting. Uh, uh, in this uh, 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 webinar, CTED webinar, we have uh, I will present uh, uh, the development of automat uh, automated roadway lighting diagnosis tools for nighttime traffic safety improvement. This presentation is based on the uh, research project funded by the CTED. And uh, my name is Jin Wang. I'm working in Qatar, the Center for Urban Transportation Research, uh, the Qatar uh, at the University of South Florida. And uh, I'm a PI of this project. We also have the two PIs, Dr. Payson Ling and Dr. Kakuri. And we also have the three uh, graduate uh, research assistants. Uh, Min Chen, Abiji, and Rune. This project is involved in uh, different area from transportation engineering, and electronic engineer, and the computer science. And we also have uh, two uh, stakeholders, uh, FDOT District 7 and the GMT, the uh, uh, private uh, company. They provide us uh, uh, great support in data collection and uh, provide a very valuable uh, comments and to for to improve our tools. Okay. This is the outline of the of this uh, presentation in the background lighting and diagnosis, nighttime safety evaluation, development of the computer tools, case study and the next step. Okay. Background nighttime crashes especially uh, fatalities are overrepresented on the US roadway. The two figures on the right side show us the in 2017, almost half fetal crashes occurred in a dark area. This is uh, a uh, nationwide statistics. And for pedestrian fatalities, we know the almost 75% of pedestrian uh, uh, nighttime, uh, almost account 75% pedestrian facilities. That's a very uh, big percentage. Meanwhile, we know only 21 to 23 of the vehicle miles traveled at night. The, the nighttime safety issue is majorly caused by the reduced visibility in a darkness, in dark uh, environment, and accompanied with a uh, drowsy and impaired driving behavior. The reduced visibility in darkness is the primary uh, contributing factor to nighttime safety. And uh, roadway lighting has been mm -hmm. recognized as an effective countermeasure to prevent nighttime crashes. Uh, roadway uh, lighting system can improve the visibility of the road and increase the side distance, make the roadside ob uh, objects more noticeable to drivers. Uh, uh, meanwhile, this uh, roadway lighting system can provide clear benefits of personal security for pedestrians, bicyclists, and the transit users during night time. So ensuring the sufficient illuminance at night is critical to improve the nighttime safety and the security for all roadway users. However, roadway lighting system uh, performance illumination performance may be uh, reduced over time. Is uh, uh, for example, reduce the lighting level and uh, poor uniformity, just like the picture shared on the right side. Right? That uh, does not satisfy the DOT's uh, standards. The po uh, possible uh, reason is the uh, nature, the natural bubble, uh, degradation and the dam damage, and uh, the obstacles, for example, tree block the uh, street lighting, 
the bubbles and the external lighting resources. This may increase the glaring uh, issue and uh, increase the uh, reduced uniformity of the lighting system. So uh, uh, periodic uh, uh, lighting level checking and maintenance is uh, necessary in nighttime safety management. Okay. Here we, need, you know, uh, we, we are going to introduce the street lighting matrix. And in ASTO roadway lighting design guide, they uh, provide uh, the some standard in street lighting design. Just uh, uh, and this uh, uh, design standard uh, design standard uh, has been adopted by state DOTs. Just uh, list uh, this table give us an example of the street lighting design standard uh, in Florida. Okay. In the standard, uh, in this uh, standard, we usually use the three uh, two uh, uh, photometric. Uh, for the mirrors. First is the horizontal illuminance. That means the uh, amount of light that falls onto a horizontal surface. And uh, for example, the, the list here for different the uh, roadway classification, the requirement is different. For freeway and the major road, usually we require the average illuminance level, the horizontal illuminance level is reach 1.5 foot candle or higher. For other, the minor street, right, this uh, requirement is a 1.0 foot candle or higher. Right? It's a different requirement. Secondly, the vertical illuminance, that's the amount of illuminance that lands on a vertical face. Right? Usually, we measured this, uh, 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 this data at a pedestrian face height, a high, uh, pedestrian face height. It, this one is usually to evaluate the visibility at a, a pedestrian vehicle conflicting area, such as the, uh, intersection, signal line intersection, and the middle block crosswalk. It's uh, uh, here, list is uh, here. And a good design of the street lighting system requires, first is a high average lighting level. I just mentioned they require the uh, average horizontal illuminance level reach a standard or the, the vertical illuminance level uh, reach a standard uh, at the uh, pedestrian and uh, vehicle conflict area. This uh, horizontal is the 4O area. In addition, the lighting system design also require a uniform distribution. Just look at this picture. The left, uh, left side is uh, uh, on with the pool uniformity right side with a very good uniformity. Poor uniformity may result some safety issue. That means when driver uh, vehicle driving along the corridor, they may from the dark area into a bright area, or from bright area in a dark area. During this transition from dark to bright, bright to dark, this, the driver needs a long time several seconds to adapt the new lighting environment. Right. During this time, the driver's detection capability is reduced and may, recall, and may cause a collision. Right. So usually we require the uniformity. Uh, uniformity reach, uh, use the two, we usually use two uh, ratio data, uh, ratios to evaluate uniformity, lighting uniformity. First, the average value over the minimum value. Next is the maximum value over the minimum, uh, minimum value. For the average first ratio, we already would require less than four. For the second ratio, we usually require 10. This is uh, a uh, uniformity standard. Okay. Uh, to monitor the street lighting uh, performance, 
we need to collect the data in field. Traditionally, we manually to collect the lighting data just on the left side. Right? We set up grid along the corridor and the uh, person to uh, use the lighting meter to measure the lighting data at each grid along the corridor. This method is uh, uh, need the uh, needed lots of people right? and, and a very long time to complete the data collection along a corridor. And uh, due to the human errors, accuracy and reliability is not good. And uh, uh, the cost is very high. We estimate uh, to complete the one mile data collection, is, uh, we need to spend uh, over $5,000. That's very expensive. And most important, uh, the data collector uh, directly export in the traffic. This, uh, this bring the con safety concern to uh, both workers and the drivers. So to address these issues, we developed the Carter at the USF developed a new system. At once the lighting measurement system uh, and in 2012 and this system is the connect the lighting meters to a microcontroller system and the connect to uh, connect to the uh, computer vehicle computer zero uh, distance measurement instrument and the, the computer or microcontroller can read the travel distance from the vehicle's computer right? and control the lighting meters. Every 10 feet, the system can read two to four uh, lighting points uh, when, uh, when the vehicle uh, travel on a uh, on road. Right? Uh, on road. This, this method bring us uh, some of the advantages. First is the high resolution data. Right? That means we collect the lighting data. We can collect lighting data every 10 feet right? uh, per lane. Right? Second is the high effic efficiency. The current system, we can drive the vehicle. Right? And, uh, when we collect data, we can drive the vehicle in a normal speed. Right. The speed is up to 80 miles per hour. Right. This can, uh, that means we can collect data in, on the freeway, on major arterial and uh, minor, minor road. Right. Uh, one night with this high speed, uh, one night we can complete the data collection for several quarters. Right. That's, uh, this is impossible to use the traditional uh, method. Most important, the cost is low. We estimate the per mile, we only need the $300. Due to the high efficiency and the low cost of the lighting system, we can utilize this system for data three lighting data collection or monitoring for big scale roadway network. Okay. From the since uh, to, uh, 2012, right, the Carter team has uh, collected the lighting data for 400, over 400 miles in Tampa Bay area using the ARMS system. And so far, we have completed the uh, six phases and uh, continue to collect the lighting data for FWT D37. We have accumulated 1.2 million the lighting points. This is uh, a big, uh, we have uh, created a big lighting data in one tree. They cover the major road at the uh, Tampa Bay area. This data, this light lighting data has been used in FWT D37 nine times safety management include the uh, lighting level check, lighting level check, and the uh, lighting retrofit project validation. Right. We 
compare the design file, the design, the lighting level, and the field uh, collected the lighting level, and uh, use the for LED HPS comparison. Right, it's at the same location. Right, before they say HPS, it's LED we compare, it. but we still have uh, facing a uh, uh, issue, a uh, question. They say, how do we fully and efficiently, uh, efficiently use the ARMS data in nighttime safety management? Based on the conversation with the stakeholders, include the FWT DG7 and the GMT, the, this company, uh, they, are, uh, they are doing lots of the nighttime safety uh, project and the street lighting and projects. Uh, based on the feedback from the stakeholders, we understand the users, the uh, find uh, the end users, the stakeholders need the following functions in night time safety management uh, involving the street lighting. First, they need to lighting pattern diagnosis. That means uh, they need to identify the sub-segment that do not meet the F-duty lighting standards. Right. It's a long cord. Second, they want to know this What's the nighttime crash risk associate the accord with the, a given a mirrored lighting patterns? And uh, they would like to uh, get the more reliable the nighttime crash risk estimation, for example, based on the prediction rather than the historical crash data. Crash data. Uh, because uh, historical crash data has the uh, uh, nature fluctuation characteristics, sometimes uh, uh, not give a, a reliable as, uh, results on the crash risk estimation. Uh, and they want to know if they propose a street lighting uh, upgrade project, what's the uh, potential benefits, uh, in other words, what's the uh, potential nighttime crash reduction. Uh, uh, These uh, benefits can help them to make the decision to select the street lighting project uh, the, with the uh, highest uh, benefit cost ratio for implementation. And uh, they all also expected uh, expected to visualize the analysis results on JS map, on figures and uh, tables and other methods. Most important, they expect they, they have a computer tool to help them to conduct, complete this, all of these tasks automatically. So based on the user needs we defined, we propose the research objective objectives in this study. First, overall, is that we want to uh, develop an innovative, uh, innovative method and tools that automatically and intelligently to conduct the nighttime safety management based on the ARMS data. Right. More specifically, we first we de will develop the diagnosis algorithm that can effectively recognize the lighting patterns and identify the uh, roadway zones with the poor lighting performance. Second, is we, uh, we develop, uh, develop the crash prediction models to predict the nighttime crash risk associated with the given uh, lighting patterns and other factors. Third, we want to develop uh, a prototype of computer tools uh, to realize the di diagnosis and the algorithm and the prediction models. And uh, we expected, uh, we want, uh, we expected the technique, uh, te technically readiness level is the level seven. That means the prototype demonstrated in the operational environment. 
and uh, finally we would like to implement the develop the tools uh, uh, in the current uh, the WT lighting project we 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 are conducting as a case study to uh, evaluate to test and evaluate the prototype we developed first <coughs> we are <coughs> we developed the, the lighting diagnosis algorithm and the, uh, we said the engineers oh, nine time, uh, the safety managers need to check the photometric status of roadway segment right, to identify which one is the satisfying the DOT standard which segment which subsegment does not right. it's a lighting diagnosis usually they based on the average lighting level is the mean of horizontal illuminance right? and the second is the uniformity to minimum uh, maximum or minimum average over minimum to evaluate the uh, lighting pattern of, of a roadway segment however in past in current practice they usually to calculate the average lighting level and uniformity right, for the whole segment. For example, they calculate the whole segment. The average is the point five and the, the maximum minimum is 14. Average or minimum is eight. Right? This is uh, uh, the photometric uh, statics for the for this chord. However, when you look at the heat map, we find the distribution of the uh, lighting level along the chord is, is uniform. On left side, it uh, looks bright. On right side, it's dark. Right? So give uh, overall statistics to evaluate the lighting performance of, the, of this segment is uh, unreliable because this uh, overall status does not adjust the diversity of the lighting pattern along the chord. So to do this, <coughs> of course, people can manually to do the nice to split the uh, segment into the two sections. But we want to use the uh, use computer tools to automatically to do this, right? To help the people to process to diagnose the lighting pattern to increase the working uh, efficiency. So. To, for this purpose, we develop a diagnosis algorithm based on hierarchical clustering methodology. Right? This, uh, this flowchart gave, uh, gives uh, uh, the procedure of the diagnosis algorithm. Right? So use a simple, uh, uh, the basic idea of this the diagnosis is, uh, sorry, is to split the whole segment into a small pieces, small zones, and calculate the photometric statistics for each zone, and combine the most similar neighboring zones as a new zone. Right? For example, with the, the two zones, their performance lighting pattern are very similar, and they, they are neighboring. Right, they are the closed. We can combine the two zones and the new zone and go back, repeat this procedure and go back. We calculate the photometric stati statistics again. Right? We repeat this procedure until to satisfy the stopping criterion. First, each zone, each zone is longer than the minimum zone length. Right? This, uh, this criterion to avoid the uh, small pieces in the final results. We set up the minimum zone length. Second is any neighboring zone pair are significant different. Right? There's a the photo lighting pattern at, at any uh, neighboring zones are significant different. To, uh, once satisfy the two stopping criterions, will finalize the diagnosis and we can calculate the photometric uh, statics for the final final zones and conduct the evaluation. Right. This is 
this is the example we apply the uh, uh, diagnosis uh, function uh, uh, in a uh, US, um, US 19. We just complete uh, uh, lighting analysis project. It looks the, uh, the computer tools automatically to recognize the uh, sub zones, right? Sub zones and each zone. Each zone, we each zone has a, a different, right? The zone, zone seven, zone six has a different the lighting level, right? lighting level, right? And uh, for this, this analysis gave us a more reliable <coughs> uh, uh, lighting uh, pattern analysis. Just uh, uh, unlike the before, we we just just calculate the statics for the whole cord. Right. The diagnostic tools help us to uh, smartly and automatically to split the whole cord in the into the different pieces, and each one has has a, a unique has a different lighting patterns. Second is the <clears throat> once we get the uh, lighting pattern, right, split the whole cord into the uh, sub segment. Right. Next question is how can we evaluate the nighttime crash risk for each sub zones? In this study, we use the safety performance function, safety performance function, and this standard highway safety menu method for lighting pattern for crash nighttime crash risk estimation. Here. We use the uh, model, crash prediction model. We developed in a previous study. They say the uh, reference for the nighttime uh, crash prediction model. Mm -hmm. a, uh, we estimate the predict the yearly nighttime crash frequency based on the mean of horizontal foot candle or horizontal illuminance and the standard division of the horizontal uh, foot candle, the right, two lighting meters and other uh, factors, uh, the AD traffic and uh, geometric design. Right. Based on this factor, we can estimate, uh, predict the nighttime crash frequency. Mean, and we also use empirical basing model to combine the predicted uh, crash frequency and the historical crash frequency. Right. Use the this is the highway safety menu to give us a more reliable results on the nighttime crash uh, prediction estimation to combine the general information and the local information. Third, we also developed the crash modification factor for lighting patterns. And based on our literature review, uh, we found uh, some limited studies uh, have developed the CMF for lighting patterns. Right? Uh, but here is just a CMF. We find a lot of study has just a CMF for the with and without lighting system. Right? But uh, the CMF for different lighting level for different lighting level, it's a there are limited and uh, reliable uh, CMF we we can find. So in this study, we develop the CMF uh, for the lighting patterns. In the CMF development for lighting pattern, there are uh, uh, technical challenges. It's a confounder challenge. Like usually the lighting level is associated with the roadway classification, right? High level road usually we require the high lighting level. Just uh, showed the, for the freeway and the major arterial, the requirement on the lighting level is the 1.5 foot candy. Right? And uh, high lighting level require is usually associated with high traffic demand, high ADT. We know high ADT is the is a factor directly influence the nighttime crash frequency. So we need and the high lighting level is the 
shows it correlated with the high ADT, we need to distinguish the effects of the lighting level from the ADT. Sometimes we observe a crash increase or reduction. We don't know this caused by the lighting level increase or caused by the ADT decrease. This a, so this is a correlation. So we, if we develop the CMF for lighting pattern, we need to to uh, isolate the effects of lighting pattern from the confounders, for example, the ADT. Right? This uh, table, this figure, two figures, show us the uh, correlations right, between the uh, lighting pattern matrix and other factors, for example, mean, illuminance mean, and the standard deviation, they are strongly correlated. Right? Look at when the lighting level is lower, then 0.44 uh, foot candle, we can see the standard division and the lighting level is uh, almost is, uh, linear correlated in this area. So based on this table, we know the main is correlated to the standard division and also uh, correlated to the ADT. ADT, main, and number of lengths and the speed limit. So we, in this study, we need to address this uh, confounding effects. Okay, we use the matched keys control study method to eliminate influence from the confounders. Uh, we select the uh, 2, uh, 2,440 uh, 2, uh, segments with a uniform, the Length. This is uh, well, 1,200 feet. Yeah, it's a uh, all this segment uh, with the uh, uh, lighting data. Right, we collect with the ARMS system, right? and we define the this segment into the uh, split the segment into two groups. First is the keys. Second is control keys. That means a segment with nighttime crash records. Right. Control is the segment without nighttime uh, crash records. And we randomly to match one case to one control as a stratum. Right. That means in each stratum, the value for the two matching variables, ADT and the standard division of illuminates, are, the, are similar. Right. They, are, they are similar. That means we use this method to e eliminate, because in each stratum, the, we can believe the ADT and the standard deviation of the illuminates are the same. So we can remove, we can eliminate influence from ADT and the standard deviation of the lighting, lighting level that we are interested in. Okay. And uh, finally, we use the conditional logistic model to uh, fit the uh, lighting uh, lighting data, right? Case control data, and uh, based on also ratio to uh, derive the CMF crash modification for the mean of horizontal illuminance and the uniformity maximum minimum ratio. Two, and uh, here we have the. Uh, CMF we find from the if we increase the mean of horizontal illuminance from 0.5 foot candle to the second level between the 0.5 to 1 point, uh, 1 zero, 0 0.0 this, this area the CMF is the 0.697 that means the cr nine time crash reduction tends to be reduced by 0.3 0.3, and uh, if we increase the mean of horizontal illuminance from 0.5 candle to over one, the same as 0.5, that means the crash, nighttime crash uh, frequency will be reduced by one minus this uh, 0.581. This uh, re represents the crash, Nighttime crash reduction, and for uniformity, 
part. Uh, if the maximum minimum ratio is uh, decreased from the over 10 to the lower 10, right? For so it's a poor uniformity, good uniformity, we find the CMF reduced. We, uh, the sample is 0 0.719. That means nine time crash uh, number frequency will reduce by one minus this value. Right, one min minus this value. So with this, the CMF we developed, we can estimate, we can estimate the uh, crash, the benefits due to uh, uh, due to uh, street lighting or roadway lighting upgrade. Right? So, uh, we can use this 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 value to estimate the benefits. Okay, based on the developed uh, the, uh, the algorithm and the models, we uh, developed the software. Right, it's uh, to uh, realize these functions. This software is uh, powered by S3. ArcGIS, uh, WebGIS technologies, right? and uh, we coded this. Uh, we coded the all functions in backend on server and provide a web service API. Right? That means uh, uh, users can call these functions from the web browser and the desktop uh, and and the desktop application, for example, ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Map. Like this, and we also this uh, this figure give us the basic structure of the uh, computer tools. They include the uh, three major modules. First is the pattern recognition. This uh, realize the street lighting diagnosis. Right. Second is the uh, risk prediction. This uh, realize the uh, crash. Uh, Crash in, uh, nighttime crash prediction and estimation, and the data visualization is uh, represents how to display the uh, our the analysis results on GIS map uh, in figure and in table. Right, it's out this output, and uh, we have the interface. We have the, some tools to read the raw data from the ARMS system into a database. Right? Based on the database, uh, the database we can conduct the analysis. Okay, this is the system uh, diagnosis. Currently, we have developed uh, develop, uh, uh, prototype, and um, this uh, link this open to the public. We can try this. Uh, OK, I can give you a very quick demonstration. OK, this is the GIS map. If we want to do here, list all the uh, street uh, roadway lighting, uh, uh, the roadway segment with the lighting data in Tampa Bay in Florida. Right? Focus on, currently, we focus on the Tampa Bay area. Right? Next, if we want to know, the, for example, in this area, right? This, uh, in this area, if we want to do the lighting diagnosis, can you use this and uh, crash prediction? We can select it. Okay, select this one. Uh, this may be because this uh, currently is a. Uh, we have we do not uh, to optimize the algorithm, so this involved lots of the GIS operations so speed may be low, maybe need the 30 to 40 seconds. OK, that's a wait. OK, almost done.
Oh, it's a uh, need because it's a uh, conduct this uh, iteration procedure. So maybe longer time. Okay, they have finished the lighting data, the lighting diagnosis. We can see they split this row the second into the one, two, three, four subsections based on the lighting pattern. And for each segment, we can click to give us the street lighting photo matrix. Right? For example, the average lighting level. 0.25 in this area, 0.25 for the candle. That's very dark, very poor. The lighting level and the uniformity, average, max, ma average over main, maximum over main of this uh, lighting level, the uniformity is also poor. And here, give us the distribution of the street lighting level uh, at this sub zone. We can see most focused on the very low, very low level, right? And uh, this is the predicted, right? Expected, predicted crashes. This is a historical crash, right? In past three years, this one is we estimate the in this year, right? Because uh, they not finished. This is not, we, we don't have the observation. We just estimate, okay, given the lighting pattern and the, the uh, the projected ADT in 2020. Okay, this uh, uh, predict estimate we have there are five. There will be five nighttime crash in these zones. Okay, and same we can see this one is the uh, lighting level is better because it's long. It's uh, and uh, here third pattern. OK, here it's, uh, yeah, gave us this. Same time, we also provide the heat map, right? We can see any point or subsect zone we are interested in. For example, we can change the background into the satellite, OK? We can see, OK, in this area, this area is very dark, bright because there's uh, some of the uh, Three lighting pool or external or external area. So, a man, uh, safety manager or engineers uh, can, according to the heat map, to check the area to this area, right? It's very low. They can check, go to the field review or uh, the document review to identify what issues cause the low level, low lighting level in the this area and they also can add the crash on the road to compare the crash compare the to uh, check the lighting level around the crash to see if the lighting level is the cause for the uh, for the crash right this uh, give them a very useful right tools to do this and let's go back to this one okay here I give uh, these uh, examples. Here, this is the case study we conducted right, in this project using the uh, roadway uh, lighting data. Uh, and uh, we collect in District 7 and uh, apply our uh, computer tools. First step, we conduct a lighting pattern diagnosis. Just I show you, we using the lighting pattern diagnosis algorithm, we split the segment right, into the four sub zones. For each zone, we get its uh, uh, photometric area, right, photometric, area, uh, uh, photometric uh, values. And uh, we find on the left side, this 
this sign, this subzone has the mo most uh, serious uh, lighting issue, right? lighting issue, and uh, this area is, uh, looks better, right? This uh, two is uh, in the middle. Right? First, we diagnose, uh, we conduct the diagnosis for each zone, and we compare this value or this value, right? Or this value with the FDUT standard. First, we adjust this zone has the uh, lighting pattern issue in uh, for the mean value based on mean value and the uniformity values. The, in the second zone, okay, uh, because this is a major corridor, the lighting level requirement is the 1.5 foot candle, right? This looks this is much lower than the 1.5. In the second one, okay, the average is still lower, but uh, this uh, mean and uh, maximum over mean, this uniform value is also higher, like both higher than the standard. We need to improve it. The third one is the mean value lower than 1.5 foot candle, but the uniformity it looks good. Right? In this area, on the right side, okay, there's a point. The low mean value lower the standard, and the, the uh, uniformity value is closed. Okay. In second step, we conduct the nighttime crash risk analysis based on the given the lighting patterns. Right? The first one, okay, we apply the safety performance function we developed to uh, estimate to predict the nighttime crash frequency based on projected ADT and the lighting patterns. Right? We find that uh, we give the expected crash frequency and uh, for each zones, for each zones, we can see, okay, uh, the manager, traffic engineering, safety engineer, same manager can understand what's the potential crash risk at each zones. Third one, we propose, if we propose a street lighting upgrade, right, that means the from the existing lighting level to the standard lighting level, right? There's a 1.5 foot candle forming and this uh, uniformity is uh, reached to 10, right? This one. Okay, we can as use the CMF we develop for the mean value and the uniformity and estimate the crash reduction due to the lighting proposal is here, this question reductor, okay? And this is for each zone, this is for whole corridor, right? This is the benefit due to the potential benefit due to the street lighting level uh, upgrade. And uh, the safety manager and the <clears throat> engineer can convert this value into the uh, monitoring values and uh, compare its project cost to estimate the benefit cost and make the decision if it's, uh, they will, they should to apply this project or not. Or they can select the project lighting upgrade uh, project for the candidate, for candidate projects with the highest benefit cost ratio. Okay, okay. Uh, next step. In this start project, we complete, uh, we develop the core functions of the lighting diagnosis and uh, crash prediction. And, and uh, based on the uh, developed models, we complete a prototype of the computer tools hosted on the uh, uh, cloud, right? the web GIS platform. Uh, in, after this project, the next step, we hope to enhance the core functions, include the lighting diagnosis, uh, improve the lighting diagnosis uh, algorithm, current algorithm just based on the single mirror. This means we calculate, compare, compare the two neighboring the zones right, to based on the one mirror 
photometric is, uh, for example, average light amp or uniformity. In future, we want to, to identify the similarity of the two zones right, based on the multiple uh, values. There is the both the average lighting level and uniformity that give us a more reasonable uh, uh, definition of the similarity of the two uh, two, uh, two zones. Secondly, the, in this study, we just consider the crash, nighttime crash prediction, we just consider the weak crashes. But I mentioned uh, at the beginning, with the pedestrian fatality or pedestrian safety is the most serious problem at night. Right? So we want to develop the safety performance function and the CMF crash modification function for pedestrians right, includes the pedestrian estimation or evaluation in in the computer tools. Third, currently the LED, I think the LED technology has been widely used in the street lighting system recently. And uh, currently the most lighting data we collect uh, is uh, uh, is uh, I think the based on the HPS because this uh, we collect data is from the uh, seven or eight years ago, eight years ago, right? and uh, uh, but we have accumulated recent in past uh, one or two years we have accumulated enough the LED lighting data. We would like to use this lighting data to develop the specific uh, uh, safety performance function and the CMF for LED technologies because LED has uh, some different with with uh, with uh, characteristics from the traditional HPS technologies. So this influence at the night time is uh, maybe different. We hope to, to address this issue. And uh, in this project, the tools, current tools is just a prototype. The interface I just show you is uh, simple. We hope to upgrade the user user interface, right, and uh, provide more the functions and the more the uh, more the, more uh, let let the uh, user interface more user friendly. Right? This uh, we uh, and uh, satisfy the user needs. Okay, and uh, we hope to move the prototype into uh, in a product right? and uh, uh, implement use. We have used the computer tools, uh, complete some case studies. We want to expand the use of the computer tools in the current FDOT District 7 lighting project and uh, our objective to uh, reach let the uh, re uh, technical readiness level from seven to eight, right? This uh, proven in an operational environment. Okay, this is the uh, project, uh, my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me at this, uh, to send me email uh, at this, uh, uh, into the, uh, this email address. And uh, I also to uh, hope you want to, uh, if you are interested, you can access our the prototype. Yes, I, I have given this uh, uh, link, the uh, link in these slides. You can access link, uh, you try to use our tools and uh, provide your comments and the suggestion our computer uh, computers that's very important uh, for us for future improvement okay thank you